Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace hanging out with Karen and we are on a rooftop terrace at 61 Prado Guest House and this is a photo challenge. And this actually is a photo challenge that was given to me by you, the viewers, because here on this rooftop terrace a few episodes ago, I shot with a different model, sorry, uh, a video about how to shoot in bright sunlight, really bad sunlight, using a fill flash and some shade. I had a, an assistant Juan, he was uh, helping out. We had a light stand and some things. And so you said, hey, what happens if you don't have a light stand or a fill flash or an assistant? It's just you and a camera. Can you get great photos? Well, you can get some great photos, but we are intentionally today trying to fix it in post. Can I fix these photos in post? So what we're going to do is we're gonna shoot some images that aren't terrific, and then I'm gonna see if I can use some of my post-production tricks to fix those images. So without further ado, let's shoot some photos, and then we'll hop over into Photoshop and see what happens. I've selected three photos from our photo shoot to edit. Each of these images have their own unique issues. So this first image here, it looks pretty good, but the color is a little bit off and it's a little bit lifeless. The second image we have that is very, very underexposed. And you'll notice that Karen is a different exposure than the background. So we're gonna have to add an artificial fill flash to even things out. And then our last photo here has a similar issue where the background is brighter than Karen. So we'll have to balance that out and it's very lifeless. So we're gonna do some extreme processing to this one. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start here with this first image. So I'm gonna go in Lightroom to the develop module. We're going to be using Lightroom and Photoshop and the Nick collection to do all of these things just to mix it up. So we don't have to do anything really complicated with this image. It looks pretty good out of the camera, but the first thing is I don't like the color. So I'm gonna go over here to my color profiles. It's set to Leica M10, that's my camera that I used. And I'm going to change that by hitting this little grid here. And there's all kinds of different profiles I can select. So I can just hover over these on the right hand side and you can see the results instantly. So what I'm going to choose is one of my favorites, it's this one modern 04. So I'll just click on that and it applies that color profile. That makes things a little bit nicer. So then I can close that. The other thing I need to do is just there's a little bit of a uh, issue here on Karen's forehead. So I'm going to grab this. This is the healing spot healing tool. So I'll just heal that really fast and close that. We'll zoom back out. All right, now let's add some life to this photo. So I'm going to right click and say edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021. Okay, now that's in Photoshop. I'm gonna double click the hand to get a larger view of this. The first thing I want to do is to make a copy of the background. So I'm gonna hit Command Control J to create a new layer that's just a copy. And then I'm going to render some artificial effects. So I'm going to go into Filter and I'm going to say Render and I'm going to add a lens flare. These are sort of fun. So what I'll do here is I first want to take this little lens flare. You can see I can click and drag this around. There's different lens types and brightnesses of these. So I want to add a lens flare across this. Something about like that. So it's really over here that I'm concerned about. And I'll put this up to match where the sun is. I like that. I'll say OK. I don't like this little uh, ring right here, so I'm gonna add a second, a different kind of lens flare. So again, I'm going to go to Render, Lens Flare, and then this time I'm gonna choose this 105 millimeter prime. You can see there's changes how things look, just to sort of wash out this and add sort of a misty look on the right-hand side of that. So that's sort of cool. Now we have this artificial lens flare. That looks good. I'm going to save that. And then once that's saved, I can return to Lightroom to do one last thing. Now that we've returned to Lightroom, you can see that that Photoshop image has appeared here. So I'm going to click on that, go to the develop module. And then the only thing I wanna do here, because we're working with video, I'm gonna change the crop to 16 by nine. So I'll choose 16 by nine. I'll go in here, I'll crop this in just a little bit so we don't have this ring. I like that, and voila, we have our nice image.
Let's take a look at this second image. You can see that it is very underexposed and it's not balanced. The foreground Karen is underexposed even more than the background. Now I could do all of the adjustments here in the develop module, but I'm going to do this in Photoshop just to show you how Photoshop and Lightroom share similar controls. So I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to open this raw file directly in Photoshop. And so you'll see that the raw file, the camera raw, Adobe camera raw opens and I have all of these controls. So let's go through these very quickly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a global adjustment. So I'm gonna adjust everything changing the exposure. I'm gonna go up about one and a half stops, something like that to get this pretty darn close. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the texture up just a bit. I like to play with that. Um, so that's gonna be all good. Now the second thing I want to do is I wanna do some local adjustments. So I wanna adjust Karen and not the background. So to do that, I can go over here and select this adjustment brush. So now I can brush on an area of the photo to make some adjustments. So to begin with, I'm going to go here to Selective Edits and click this little arrow here to reset everything. So it's all set to zero, so I don't accidentally make some changes that I'm not planning to make. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the exposure. So I'm gonna go up by a little bit more than a stop, so about 0.85. And then I'm just going to drag my brush and start painting over Karen. Now this is sort of an artificial fill flash. And so I will really quickly paint her in. So I did that very, very quickly. Obviously you'd want to take a little bit more time to do this precisely. But what I can do to see where I've painted, I can go and click on this mask options and see where I've painted this effect on and off. And you can see if I change the exposure, it's only changing the area where I painted. So that's called an adjustment brush. So I'm gonna bring this back up to about 0.85, something like that, my artificial fill flash. Then let's just do some other quick adjustments here that I think will make a big difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our highlights, we're gonna take those down just a bit, and then I'm going to go open up my shadows just a little bit here up to maybe 35, something like that. And then the blacks, I will take those values down just a hair. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna change my texture and clarity just to make this really stand out from the background because we don't have a lot of separation. So I'll increase that, increase my clarity just a bit. And then that's starting to look pretty darn good. I like that quite a bit. Okay, the other thing I need to do is fix that same little spot on her forehead that we fixed in the other image. So what I'm going to do is click on this. This is the spot removal tool. I have it selected to heal. So I can just go in there, click on that. It's gonna automatically choose an area that I can drag around to heal from. That looks pretty good. And then I will say open. Here's our final image. I think that looks pretty good, but let me just show you that Lightroom and Photoshop Camera Raw, Adobe Camera Raw share the same tools. And so if you don't have Photoshop, you can do this in Lightroom. If you don't have Lightroom, you can do this in Photoshop. So I'm not gonna save this. I'm just gonna close that out. And then let's jump right back here into Lightroom. Here's that same image. And I'm going to go to the develop module. You can see that we have all those adjustments right here on the right hand side. And then we have our adjustment brushes and our spot healing tools. All that stuff is here, just like it is in Camera Raw. To save some time, I have already done this. So I'm gonna click on this. It says fixed, bam, and there it is. So this has also been cropped. But you can see, if I click on this adjustment brush and click this little dot, you can see here are all the adjustments I made exactly the same. If I hover over this, you can see that I've painted just on Karen. So everything is the same. You can do this in Photoshop or Lightroom. It's your choice. Now let's take a look at this third image. We have similar issues as we had in this second image. So I'm gonna click on the develop module. Since we already know how to balance things out by using our local adjustments, I'm going to skip that. We've already done that here. So I'm gonna click this snapshot. In other words, I've saved all the adjustments I've made. I will click on that and it's going to update this image. And there we have it all balanced out. So again, I've done the same thing. I used an adjustment brush here to change uh, Karen, and I also uh, highlighted her eyes just a little bit. 
I made similar adjustments that we did to the image before. Now, although this looks better, there's still some issues with this image. There's no separation behind her. And I think it could be a little bit more extreme. So I'm gonna use Nick Analog Effects Pro. So what I will do is I will right click on this and I'm going to say edit in Analog Effects Pro 2. So this opens in Analog Effects Pro 2 and you can see on the left hand side, I have all of these different things, these different cameras that I can click and do things. I did an entire video on Analog Effects Pro 2. I've added a link in the description of this video. So if you're not sure how this software works, I have a, a complete video all about that. So you can choose different camera effects that are already built in, or you can click this little arrow here and you can use these basic tools. And so you can do different things. For example, here's one that I really love. It's called Light Leaks. And this will actually add, similar to an old school film camera that's broken, adding light leaks. So light leaking into the camera and that changes the effect. You can do really crisp effects. You can increase or decrease those things. You can do dynamic effects, all those kinds of things. You also have something that I really love, which is artificial bokeh. So if I click on bokeh, you can choose where to place the center of that. You can change the size and shape. You can make the feather a little bit more or less. You can change the blur strength to blur out the background a lot or not so much. That's really cool. And another thing I love here is this thing called film type. So by clicking on that, I can change the color similar to those color profiles that we used in Lightroom and Photoshop. So you can change how that looks. You can also add these on top of each other. So I could have a, let's say a black and white. So I'm gonna do a black and white uh, film effect here. Then I can add by clicking this little plus a bokeh effect, which is sort of cool. I could then go and add a frame to this and then choose whatever frame I wanted. So something more like this, I guess would work. And so you can add and mix and do all kinds of things to change how your photo looks. Once you do that, you can save all of these different combinations as a custom preset. So I've already created a custom preset for this photo. And so I'm gonna go down and grab that. I have called it Karen Extreme. So once I have that there, here is the final result of my little formula that I've used for this and then I'm going to click save and that will put that back into Lightroom. Now that that's in Lightroom, I'm gonna do just what I did with everything else. I'm going to crop this to a 16 by nine because it's for video. I think something a little bit like this is gonna look good. And then I will save that. Ah, change that just a little bit more, something like that. Okay, and there is our final result. Thank you, Karen! Woo! That was job. awesome. We had lots of fun in Photoshop, and I'm guessing that it all turned out because I haven't done the Photoshop yet, but <laughs> I think so. If you wanna see more of Karen's work, then just look in the description of this video. I've included a link to her Instagram so you can see all the great stuff that she's doing. Also, make sure you subscribe to Adorama TV and turn on the bell. We have all kinds of live shows, and if you don't turn on the bell, you're not gonna get a notification. You're gonna miss out on great stuff by Seth Miranda and Daniel Norton and a bunch of other people. So click the bell and get good stuff. Thanks again for joining us, and I will see you again next time. This is my dance. This is my dance. <laughs>